This video is going to be about Mita's EO7 Plus Dakar version. These tires are promoted like 50-50 or 60-40 on off-road. Sounds like a best adventure option, right? Partly I'll agree with this statement, but they have some significant cons that you have to know before you decided to buy these tires. So if you have nothing to do, grab your favorite drink and stay with me. Welcome back! As I said in the intro, the tires are promoted 50-50 or 60-40 on off-road. Let me now play you a short video, an example for what the tires could be used for. These tires are suitable to be ridden on any kind of terrains. From bumpy asphalt roads to very flat dirt roads like this that I'm going to ride now. Even if you have lines left from the trucks or heavy vehicles they'll be fine always keep in mind that this is uh, an adventure motorcycle this is not a dirt bike so you cannot expect the same traction as you're gonna have with a dirt bike with a proper dirt tires but uh, for an average rider like me they will be just fine on the, such a terrains. Uh, the upgrade that I have made with the suspension uh, is just much much better now. It's like a new bike. If it's not so muddy, it will hold as well. Basically, you can point the motorcycle whatever you want and the tires will do the job. So, as I said, even if you have some stones like this one or even worse, it will work just fine. <laughs> Alright, uh, so they are perfect tires to have some kind of dirt road connections like I've got now. And then go to the asphalt roads and twist again. This is what we call a dual sport tire or 50-50. 60 40 or whatever numbers they've got you can ride on the dirt roads and then you can ride on the asphalt roads they will be good enough to almost any twisty road as long you know that it is 50 50 tire but as i said they will also serve you well every time when you decided to turn from the main road and uh, and uh, have something different than the standard tarmac roads like this now <laughs> this is the famous television tower and this is the whole Varna, right in front of me. The whole town. Yeah, nice location. Let's continue my journey. And when it comes to traveling on the secondary roads like this with 100, 110, 20 kilometers per hour, these tires are just perfect. All right, so instead of having like 30 to 40 minutes going around the town, in the town with all traffic lights and everything I just got 20 minutes from my place up to Varna Shorten it my way just because of the tires And the last connection for the day These are some sharp stones here
on the green grass as long as it's not wet they are fine when it's wet <laughs> disaster all right i hope that you get the idea the first thing that you have to know is that this Mitas eo7 tires got two different versions the first is Mitas eo7 enduro and the second is Mitas eo7 plus enduro trial we're gonna discuss the second version and the second version also got two different versions the first is standard the second is Dakar which is marked with a yellow stripe like the rear tire that I've got on the motorcycle right now it's a little bit dirty but I'm gonna clean it for you to see this yellow stripe during the years I have used at least five different sets of meter tires but I didn't know the difference between standard and Dakar version even though I have seen these yellow straps in many bikes but I never owned it I never tested and I didn't know the difference until I finally got it on my motorcycle in 2015 I did my Central Asia trip around 18,000 kilometers on Midas EO7 Enduro I did another 2,000 kilometers with the same tires before they finished they were really worn it out but they did the job even without a single puncture after that in 2019 during my trip around New Zealand I tried Midas EO7 Plus for the first time and I really liked it it was during the winter time and the temperatures were between 5 and 25 degrees I got some dirt road, suns, rainy days and a few kilometers of black ice but even so the tires were almost perfect in all of those conditions after that for the next few years I used only Mitas EO7 Plus tires with a small exceptions here and there and I still have it on my old Tenere with a few words I was a happy owner of this brand and model and it was like this until I got my new Tenere which came with this Pirelli STR tires they are again like 50-50 tires I was not so happy with them but they came with the bike the front especially I replaced it after 2000 kilometers because it was wobbling and it was bended somehow and I replaced it with AKC 80 but with the rear I've done almost 20,000 kilometers maybe a little bit more I squeezed everything from it as I said not perfect but it did the job I even made a video review about uh, Pirelli STR tires if you haven't watched it you can do it from here when this Pirelli STR tire finished I wanted to replace it with Continental TKC 80 but the cheapest option that I have found online was something like 250 euros and this was even without the price for the tire shop to mount it on my motorcycle and then I start to looking for solutions and I found this uh, Midas EO7 Plus Dakar version on very good price something like 150 euros and I said okay I know very well this tire it's not take easy but I know that it works well and I'm gonna have it and I asked even the guy from the shop what is the difference between the standard and Dakar version and he couldn't tell me he tell me something like it, it's it is maybe stronger for off-road but he couldn't tell me exactly so I bought it and mounted on my motorcycle from the moment I left the tire shop I knew that there is something wrong here it was different the rear was producing some kind of uh, strange vibration very strange like wobbling a little bit at the beginning I thought oh maybe it's a brand new tire I will give it a little bit time but after a few kilometers I knew that something is wrong and I thought that they might even made some kind of wrong assembly in the shop so I stopped and checked everything but everything was all right then I give it a little bit more kilometers it, it was like a, uh, every time when I press the rear brake I felt it like a bent rotor but the rotor was fine it's a brand new motorcycle I know that the rotor was fine because it was perfect until I get to the tire shop and completely different after the tire shop so and then I went to my friend and mechanic Plamen's garage and, and gave the motorcycle to him he also checked it ride it and he said it's from the tire and then I said all right I'm gonna give it at least uh, two three hundred kilometers it's a brand new tire maybe it will settle a bit but it didn't and it was a winter time the temperatures were there was there is no snow on the streets but they were like five to ten degrees and I noticed that uh, every time when I press the brakes I actually sliding on the road every time my ABS was activating like gish, 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 every time and then on the few corners I I slide it even a little bit and then one of the days was raining and it was terrible to ride on the rain with this rear tire even though it has already like 
500 kilometers and then I was waited and waited and waited and now the moment I've got almost like 2000 kilometers and it is still the same I cannot really trust on this tire when the asphalt is cold and when it's wet when the weather is like today 18 19 degrees it's fine you can ride it without any problem the vibration is still there but at least the traction is good but on cold asphalt and wet asphalt mm, I always got this in my mind I even went to another tire shop and made the balance once again even though the first time it was perfect it has only 40 grams and went exactly zero I was there to watch it on the second tire shop it was the same no problem with the wheel no problem with the balance it's something with the material that the tire is made from then I realized that I made a mistake. I should have bought this Continental Take EC 80 tires, but it is what it is. At least I'm going to know this for the future and I can share this information with you guys. Anyway, after that, I went home and made my research, which I should have done before I purchased these tires. But anyway, again, this is a useful information. And let me show you what I found. The first is that the Dakar version lasts much longer than the standard version. The harder rubber compound on the Dakar version yellow stripe marking brings 20% more mileage compared to the standard version and almost completely puncture protection thanks to the reinforced carcass. The rubber compound on the standard version, non-Dakar, is better suited for wet roads. Stronger carcass, better mileage, 20% more mileage. Oh, this is perfect. Sounds very positive, right? The best adventure tire, 50-50, 60-40. Wonderful. But on what cost? I already told you poor handling on wet and cold asphalt, some strange vibrations. You cannot fix it until you warm the tire. I already have got 2000 kilometers and it is still the same. Very hard compound. If you plan to make a compromise with the tires, you have to understand the risks. And I'm here to remind you that the tires are the only thing that keep your motorcycle in straight position. They're the connection between the asphalt and you. And I will always bet on better traction than longevity. But the decisions will be yours and I cannot control it. Anyway, and the last con that uh, I would like to tell you on this video is that because of this hard compound, because of this hard carcass, it will be very, very difficult to change these tires on the road. And this I can confirm because I have my personal experience. I recently exchanged the front tires of my bikes. On the old Tenere I got Mitos 07, a standard version, and on my new Tenere I've got TKC 80, both front tires. For the same time that I need to change one Mitos 07 standard version, I can change at least two TKC 80 tires. That big is the difference between them. And my final conclusion. I don't think that you're gonna notice any difference between standard and Dakar version on the dirt roads. At least I did not feel anything. But as they promised, maybe the Dakar version, because of this hard compound or hard carcass, will be better to protect your rims or maybe to have less punctures. But I cannot confirm this because I haven't got this type of experience. Anyway, on the roads, it's a different story. If your goal, your priority is to have as maximum as possible mileage from these tires, then go for a Dakar version. For example, now on my upcoming trip to Magadan, I would like to start from here, Varna, and reach Novosibirsk in the middle of Russia with the same tires. At the moment, I've got 2,000 kilometers, and until I got there, there will be like 12 or 13,000, and I hope that I'm gonna reach Novosibirsk with this tire. So my goal is to have as maximum as possible tires. I know that it's going to be a summer. I do not expect much rain and I can risk to go with these tires. But on the other hand, if your plan is to have a beautiful twisty roads, you do not include any dirt roads. You don't even need dual sport tires. Go and buy something else. But if you know that you're going to have some dirt roads and you still want to have this uh, good traction, but possibility to go here and there on the dirt roads, then go to the standard version because it will provide the traction that you're gonna need on the cold asphalt, on the rainy days, also on the dirt roads. I hope that this information will be useful to at least one person. Press like or dislike, whatever the video deserves. If you subscribe 
even better. Don't forget that every Sunday around 8 o'clock East European time, I make live streams for channel members and Patreons. If you want to watch it, but you don't want to become a member on Patreon, you can do it on my second channel, Motorcycle Adventures Live. It will be a few days later. It is not going to be live anymore. You wouldn't be able to ask questions and receive answers, but it will still have the same information. All the details will be in the description down below. See you next time. Ciao.